Hi everyone, welcome back. Today we're doing valid anagrams. We're given two strings, S and T, and we will return true if T is an anagram of S and false otherwise. In this case, for our viewers who are new to this jargon, an anagram is a word or phrase formed by rearranging the letters of a different word or phrase, typically using all of the original letters exactly once. That's quite a big sentence, but what it pretty much means is if you can rearrange this character such as you can form T, then both of them are valid anagrams of one another. So in this case, this is true for this test case. And for this, we have red and car. There's no way for us to rearrange red to get car. So in this case, both of them are not anagrams of one another. So for S and T, the length of both strings ranges from length 1 to 5 times 10 to the power of 4 characters. And both S and T consist of only lowercase English letters. So there's no need for us to worry about uppercase or lowercase stuff. So one way we can go about this is to iterate through all characters in S and add all characters along with the counts of or occurrence of that S inside this dictionary. So we can call this S char to count. This will be a dictionary of string to integers. And what we'll do is we'll just do for char in S we will proceed to update this given count with s char get char 0 plus 1. So that's a pretty long sentence but or code. But what we are pretty much doing is we are setting the current count for this given character. The character is the key. That's why the type of the key is a string. And the value is the count or the number of occurrences for that character for now. What we are doing is we try to get the existing count. If it doesn't exist, we default that to zero and we add one to that. So if there is zero, we'll just plus one and we effectively set the count of this character to one. So after we populated this dictionary, what we can do is do a linear scan across T as well. And we check if the character count in for char is more than equals to one and if that's the case then everything is fine we would just decrement the count of this char by one else in this case then it's not a valid anagram so in this case that's also one thing that we also have to check for right and that is also if the length of s and t are the same right it is possible okay it's okay i will I, I i digress but i will come up with some test cases to challenge this proposed algorithm but in this case if this is if there is not enough characters to form t then in this case what we can do is hmm what can we do yeah let's just set this to east anagram Let's define a boolean and let's just assume both S and T are anagrams of each other unless proven otherwise. And we will set this anagram to false if we do not have enough characters in S to for T over here. So looks great. But before this check, we will also need to check if length of S is equal to the length of T. And if it is not, then we will return false. So this is a guard to just check that both S and T have the same length. If they are not the same length, then they are definitely not valid anagrams of one another. What are some test cases that might throw this off? Let us think for a moment. What if you have AAA and CCC? So let's say S is equal to AAA and T is equal to CCC. So this will pass line 7 we will populate s with all characters of a and this will probably yeah this will fail yeah yeah no this will as in this will detect it so if we try to get c in t then in this case this will evaluate the false and we will return is anagram equals to false so looks like this algorithm does work what other instances might this fail Let's see. Let's come up with a very hard test case. So let's see. No, it's okay. This 
this check over here on line 7 saves us from a lot of corner cases where, for example, you get something like this. This technically will pass because let's say let's say S is the longer string instead. Then S would have enough characters to, to accommodate all characters in T. So this will actually all this whole linear iteration will not change its anagram to false. But I digress, that is a lot of detail, but in short, this check over here on line 7 prevent weird test cases like this to happen. So this strategy looks is pretty looks like it's pretty good. Car. So now let's do red and car. So now the length of S and T is indeed equal to each other. So this is false. So we skip this. And S char the count in this case would be an empty dictionary. So this will be an empty dictionary like this. And this anagram will be now set to true. So now we will start iterating all characters in S. So the current character is R. And we set the current char to count for this to be 1. Same for A and same for T. So I'm skipping a few steps here but we are pretty much going through all iterations to populate s char the counts with all characters and its occurrences in s and now we are ready to start iterating through all characters in t so now we have c in this case c doesn't exist here so we will break right away and return false so yeah, this algorithm looks like it works. So now let's try coding it out again. The implementation is already there, but let's go through it again to get a, a high-level overview of this approach again. So the first thing we do is check if the length of S and T are the same. If they are not, then they are guaranteed to not be valid anagrams. The next thing is to define S char to count to keep track of all characters and their occurrences in S. And we'll be using this to check if T is missing any characters in S or vice versa. So is anagram boolean equals to true. And now we are ready to start iterating characters in S. So for characters in S, S char to count char is equals to s char to count dot get char 0 plus 1. So we have just iterated through all characters in s to populate this dictionary. So we can continue and we can start to do a linear scan from left to right for all characters in t as well. So for each character in t, we will check whether if we have the corresponding character in s. And if there is, then we will decrement the current count for that character else in this case if we do not have enough characters in s for this current character in t then in this case this s and t are not valid anagrams of one another so we will break and we return this anagram over here so that's pretty much the implementation over here let's quickly test this out let's quickly look and check for any potential typos looks good yeah, this looks great. Let's run this again, some test cases. Oh, that's quite a, that's a mistake, which I didn't spot. But okay, this passes. Let's run this. And yes, this passes. So let's go through the time and space complexity as usual. So if we let n to be the length of s and m to be the length of t in this case we are iterating through all characters in s to populate the dictionary so in this case it's going to be o n and over here this is o m sorry so we are iterating through all characters in o m and all operations over here take o one time as well so in this case, the final time complexity will be on plus om. So now let's go through the space complexity now. Let's remove all the workings for space complexity before we do that. 
So on line 17 to line 19, we are populating the dictionary with all characters and their corresponding counts in this dictionary. So this dictionary over here will take up the O N space. And this happens when all characters in S happen to be unique characters. So the number of key value pairs that happens in the dictionary would be the same as the number of characters in S. So this can take up to O N. The more characters there are in S, the more S char the count will scale linearly. And for the rest of the algorithm, we don't use any other variables that scale linearly with n or m. So in this case, the space complexity is just O n. And that's pretty much it for this question. Aside from a few typo mistakes, I hope that this video was helpful to you. And if you find this useful, please give us a like and subscribe and we will see you in the next video.